Hello, and welcome to Forward to the Past. In this episode, we're going to be looking at cleaning my dirty laundry with this 1960s hot point countess. Now, to the modern eye, this washing machine may not even resemble what you'd expect a washing machine to look like. For example, it's got this strange mechanism on the top, there's no door at the front, and it has this hatch on the top. Now I'm going to pop this open. This is basically what you call a top-loading washing machine. Very, very typical of vintage washing machines. And it's still a popular design over in America, but here in the UK, they are long gone. Now we've got some uh, components in here, which we'll come back to these. It's all about this. This is referred to as either the agitator or the paddle. And it, this basically sits inside and it goes back and forth. It doesn't go round and round. It goes back and forth like this. And later on when we fill it with water, you'll see how this actually affects the water. So inside here is basically the washing drum. This is the prop shaft with the, the drive on the top that makes the paddle go back and forward. And then down here is the drain plug, which is also, well, it's, this is the drain hole. And this is just a filter over the top to stop too much of the little bits of debris falling down there and blocking the pump. Now one of the key differences about vintage washing machines like this is they are not plumbed into your main water line in your house, which means you have to fill them yourself. Now that is what this pipe here is for. So the end of this basically goes over your hot tap in your kitchen by your sink and you put this next to your sink and you'd simply fill it up with the water from the main. And then we have these here. Now modern washing machines, they drain themselves. So when they're done, you open the door, the washing in there is damp, but there's no water. It's not so much the case with these. They're still, it's going to still be filled with hot water. So these are laundry tongs. You quite often see these in antique shops and flea markets just kind of hanging around, not really being sold for very much. And I can guarantee only people of a certain age will actually know what these are. And it's simply for picking up the laundry, which is far too hot to touch, or mainly the water is far too hot. You can pick it out and then we move on to the mangle. So this is the mangle part of the washing machine. Now this washing machine doesn't have a spin drying setting like we have nowadays. So it can't dry the clothes whilst it's inside the tub. So that's what the tongs are for. We pick out the clothes and it will go through the rollers and then you fish them out the other side. They won't be bone dry but they'll be pretty much dry and you can either put them on the washing line or in your tumble dryer or whatever you want to do with them. Before we see the washing machine in action, I thought we'd just have a little peek on the inside of what's going on behind the scenes. I've taken the screws off that hold this somewhat rusty back, and I'll just take this off. So here we have the electric motor, so I can reach around and just activate that now. So that uh, essentially powers everything. Uh, this is not dissimilar to what you'd find in your washing machine nowadays. The design really hasn't changed that much. This blocked area here, this is the gearbox which powers the paddle and also the prop shaft that goes up to the mangle. And then here we have the water pump. So this thick pipe here, that comes from the very bottom of the tank where the water is in there. And that's just gravity fed. And when it gets to this pump, when you activate it, it makes the water shoot up this pipe. And we'll come back to that later on after I've done the washing to see exactly the use of why the water needs to go up this pipe. But I can just show you this in action. If I pull the pump lever, you can see it just pulls it up ever so slightly. Now on the inside of this electric motor, there's a little wheel which is attached to the pump. And when I pull the lever up like this, it engages that wheel. So that will just make it spin. So I, I get this spinning now and I pull it up. So that's now activated the pump. And then there's just this little drainage hole here. So if you want to, you can also take this off at the end to make sure every drop of water is out. That's only advisable if you're not gonna be using this washing machine again for a while, as stagnant water can do damage to gaskets and pipes. But if you're using it regularly, like you would have done back in the day, no one would have bothered with that. Let's have a look at the very basic controls that this washing machine has. Essentially, there are four different switches. 
So down here we have three of them. Now if you have the deluxe model of the Countess, the kind of posh one, there'll actually be four switches down here, one of which will activate a heater element, so you don't even need to fill it with hot water. But this being the more bog standard one, has to be filled with hot water yourself. So here we have motor, the, the letters are still there but they're somewhat faded. Motor, that will start the electric motor which essentially powers everything else. We have wash, now this one will start the agitator, the paddle, doing its backwards and forwards motion. And then finally pump, uh, which will activate a pump to drain the washing machine. We'll move on to that in greater detail once I've actually washed my clothes. And then the fourth switch is the one on the mangle, so if I start the motor, and activate it, the rollers go, so they'll be ready to receive the wet clothes. And also I can just show before we fill it with water, I put the agitator in, and that can sit nice and flush at the bottom, just got to get it to line up on the shaft, and then off that goes. So now I think it's time we got some water. Pour this in and bring it up to that level. Okay, right, the water is filled to the level, it's nice and hot. I've got my washing fluid pod thing, or you could put powder or whatever you want in there. Start the motor, start the paddle, there we go, and I'm now going to drop it in. Now that is perfect, ready to go. So inside my smelly laundry bin I have my uh, Doctor Who pyjamas which I am not ashamed to show on the internet. And if I put them in here, as the paddle gets hold of it, or the current, it just pulls it down and it will suck the entire thing underwater. Um, so what's going on in there basically is the paddle is beating the clothes, it's whacking, the, the currents are going up and down as it changes direction and it pushes the clothes to the top and then pulls them back down and essentially at, at the bottom the, the agitator has these paddles and it's literally bashing the clothes and it, it punches the dirt out of it so I'm just going to chuck in a few more things, boxer shorts this is genuine as well, these are actually my dirty uh, undergarments which I'm putting in here. So I can put in a quite a big load actually, a surprising amount can go in here. And because the water is hot, I can use the tongs just to push them down and get that cycle going. It's good not to overfill these because you want to make sure that the clothes can move around freely so the paddles can do their job and push all the clothes, all the dirt out of the clothes one sock always escapes and then finally what I can do is just put the lid back on and leave it for half an hour 45 minutes or an hour however long you feel it needs if it's uh, if it's really muddy or oily clothes I generally leave them in there for an hour but with this lot I'll probably just do 30 minutes <laughs> roughly half an hour that my clothes have been in there, so it's time to mangle them. I normally mangle them and put them straight into the tumble dryer, but because I'm outside I'm just going to put them in this bucket, so pretend it's a tumble dryer for now. I'm gonna, these clamps here will just tighten those together so the, the rollers are really pushed tight. The reason I don't leave it like that is because it, it, it can disshapen them, so that's the release. Let's put it down and I can start the rollers. Let's take out a pair of boxer shorts and through they go. And it just squeeze all the water out and it just goes straight back into the tub. So you see how wet they are coming out? Stick them through here. Let the mangle do all the work and they come out nearly dry. Just gotta be careful you don't get your fingers caught in there.
There we go. Doctor Who pyjamas have now been cleaned. So the last kind of feature that this washing machine has is this release bar here. So if something were to get stuck, it, it tends to be large clumps of things or duvets, that kind of thing, duvet covers. It, the whole thing will grind to a halt, but the motor will still run. So you immediately turn the motor off and you just press this and it will spring open and then you can pull this up and release whatever was jamming the rollers because if you leave the motor running and nothing is able to move you're going to break something so that's a kind of emergency release but uh, for what I'm washing at the moment it really is uh, it's not going to jam up now it is time to drain the water I'm going to switch it off for a moment. As you can see, the water is a kind of dark, purpley, muddy kind of colour. So in theory, all the dirt that was on my clothes is now in the water and my clothes are clean. So this is the pipe from earlier which you would use to fill up the washing machine from the sink. And I put this end into the hole here. Now if you remember earlier on, I showed the water pump underneath, saying that it goes directly up and it goes into that hole. I can show you this just by turning the pump on now. You can see it's rushing out of there. But of course, at the moment, that's just recycling it straight back into the tub. So I put that in here, and I'm gonna put the other end down into this red bucket as I have nowhere to drain it safely. So I'm gonna put this down the drain rather than on the lawn. And that would just, just get rid of it now. Right, that's drained. Now one thing I discovered when I started using vintage washing machines is as it's draining you'll always find the odd sock at the bottom which you just weren't able to see until the washing machine is completely void of water. So it's just a simple case of sticking these through the mangle. And that is how you wash vintage style. So there you have it, the 1960s Hot Point Countess. Would I recommend this old relic to your average modern Joe instead of their current washing machine? Well, probably not. The reason being they are much more labour intensive. You have to fill them up yourself. You have to put every individual item of clothing through the mangle at the end and then drain it afterwards. It just takes a lot longer instead of just pushing a button and waiting for it to be done. But there is one thing I can say. The finished result, the quality of the wash, is no different to what you'd have today. Thanks for watching.